Hello and welcome to this short video where I'm going to go through the week one problem set for nuclear chemical engineering. So our first question tells us that the energy of formation of water from its constituent gases is 54,500 calories per mole and the question asks us to verify that uh, this is equivalent to 2.4 electron volts per molecule of water. So uh, to do that we need to know some some values. So firstly Avogadro's number, the number of molecules in a mole is uh, 6.022 by 10 to the power of 23. We also uh, need to know a conversion factor which is that one calorie is equal to 4.184 joules and we also need to know that one electron volt is equal to 1.6 by 10 to the power of minus 19 joules. So you can look up what the definition of an electron volt is. Um, it's basically the energy that's gained by one electron uh, moving across a potential of one volt, the amount of energy gained or lost. And uh, you could also solve this problem if you looked up a direct conversion between calories and electron volts, uh, but I'll do it this way. So we just write 54,500 calories per mole, and then we multiply that by our conversion between moles and elect, uh, number of molecules. So I put that in square brackets to indicate that everything inside the brackets is uh, equal to unity, has a value of one, uh, so it's just a conversion factor. Uh, we convert uh, our calories to joules, so we multiply this by 4.184 joules per calorie and we convert our joules to electron volt so if we look now we can cancel out moles and moles we can cancel out calories and calories and we can cancel out joules and joules so we're just left with units of electron volt per molecule and if we uh, calculate that or put it into a spreadsheet which is what I did uh, we end up with a value of 2.36 electron volts per molecule and if you round that to one decimal place uh, you have our original value here which is 2.4 EV per molecule of water. So that's it for question one. In question two we are asked to look at some nuclear equations. So just to remind you when we have a species like this uh, we have two numbers. The one at the top here is called the A number and that's equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons in the nucleus and this number is the Z number and that's just equal to the number of protons. So if we look at our first equation it says that 1, 0, N, so this is a neutron plus the example that we just used, nitrogen 14 is converted to something plus a proton. So uh, if we look at the numbers across the top, the A numbers, we have 1 plus 14 is equal to something plus 1, so that must also be 14. And our Z numbers, 0 plus 7 is equal to something plus 1, so that must be 6. 
So if we look uh, on a periodic table, you'll see that 6 corresponds to corresponds to carbon, and so this is carbon-14. So that's our answer. And likewise for our second equation, we have 2, 1, hydrogen, plus 9, 4, beryllium, gives something, plus a neutron. So balancing our A numbers across the top, we have 2 plus 9 is 11, so this must be 10 plus 1 is 11. Sorry for the zooming there. And 1 plus 4 is 5, so this must be 5 here. So again, looking on a periodic table to see what element corresponds to a Z number 5, the answer is boron. So these are our two answers for question 2. Now, question 3 is a very interesting question because we are looking at uh, the interchange between mass and energy. So you should remember from uh, high school that mass and energy are interchangeable. And uh, the very famous question, a uh, very famous equation that links it to is E equals mc squared. Uh, so we can use a derived form of that uh, to give us an equivalence between one atomic mass unit uh, and that is equal to 931.49 mega electron volts. And it's electron volts to the power of 6. So that is just a, a much more convenient way for us to work with these conversions between mass and energy when we're talking about nuclear reactions uh, because we often quote the mass of uh, nuclei in atomic mass units and we often quote the energy in electron volts. So this is a, a very useful equivalence for us to work with. Uh, so we're given uh, the atomic masses uh, for uh, uh, the transmutation of nitrogen to oxygen. So the first thing that we need to do is, is actually write our equation. So we have nitrogen being converted to oxygen and we're given the particular isotopes that we should work with uh, based on those atomic masses that are there. So it doesn't take much to work out that we need to bombard our nitrogen with an alpha particle and the emission that we expect is a proton and we are asked to find the minimum amount of energy that this alpha particle must have to cause the transmutation of nitrogen to oxygen. So if we're calculating that minimum we're basically assuming that this proton that's emitted is emitted with very little energy because we're calculating uh, a minimum amount for the alpha particle. That doesn't really make sense that it would be emitted with zero energy, but let's, we'll have to use that to calculate a minimum for the alpha. Obviously it would require more than the minimum to cause the reaction to occur. So all we need to do is do an energy balance. Uh, so we have one of each of these uh, species, so we don't have to multiply uh, the masses by anything. So we can just calculate uh, the uh, mass difference between the products minus the reactants. And so if we substitute in our numbers, we have 16.999132. Plus 1.007825 minus 14.003074 minus 4.002603, and the answer is negative 1.28 by 10 to the minus 3 atomic mass units. So the energy corresponding to that, 
So the fact that this is negative is saying that without any energy given to our alpha particle, the products would have less energy than the reactants. And that doesn't make sense. A reaction won't proceed under those circumstances. So this is the energy that we need to, the minimum amount of energy we need to give to our alpha particle. And so that energy is equal to this. I'm just going to change the sign of it, but we could multiply it by negative 1. Uh, multiplied by that, uh, this equivalence here, 931.49 mega electron volts per atomic mass unit. And so the answer is 1.19 mega electron volts. The that's, that's the fit, that's the end for question three. Now question four is very similar. Uh, in question four we're asked to find the energy release in the reaction which is denoted as 6,3 lithium neutron alpha particle 3, 1 hydrogen. Now if you remember uh, how this is a shorthand notation for a nuclear reaction, the uh, the long way to write out such a reaction is that a neutron bombards our target nucleus, which is the lithium, resulting in the transmutation to 3,1 hydrogen. plus the emitted particle, which is an alpha particle. We know that an alpha particle is the same as a helium nucleus. And so we can do uh, the same type of assumption, and we assume that our alpha particle that's emitted has approximately zero energy, and so then we just calculate the energy release is equal to the reactants, the mass of the reactants minus the mass of the products multiplied by our conversion factor uh, that we used previously which was uh, 931.49 mega electron volts per atomic mass unit. And if we substitute in the numbers there that were given in the problem statement, we end up with uh, uh, an answer which is 5.14 by 10 to the minus 3 atomic mass units multiplied by 931.49 mega electron volts per atomic mass unit. And if you multiply those together, you get 4.78 mega electron volts. And that's the answer for question four.